Thank you, Kenny. And uh, well, I, I'd like to thank uh, AWS again for providing us this uh, really, really great venue. I think nothing beats this kind of view as well. So thanks for AWS again. Um, uh, we got third. Uh, let's get the, our 2018 meetup. Uh, yeah, underway. So it's I'm gonna, just going to get started. Um, actually, today I'm going to talk about batch normalization. Who has heard of that before? Thank you. Um, and, and the rest of your guys are going to hear it uh, today. So, which is great, uh, kind of makes. Um, right, so, so uh, batch normalization, and also the following on from that batch normalization, it's called uh, uh, layer, norm layer normalization, which is for the sequential models. These are, are the methods which we use to speed up our training, okay? So if you haven't, if you start training your CNN with many, 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 many different layers, I highly encourage you to actually use the, um, the, the batch normalization, because it actually trains the model a lot faster. So why does it do that? Uh, there's a couple of uh, explanations. So over the last uh, week or so, uh, I have actually written down some of the theories behind why batch normalization works. Um, it's all now being uploaded into a, um, my GitHub. So I think it's on the, on the Meetup website, there's a link to it, so you can download it and play around with it too and stuff. Um, so. Basically, for those of you who hasn't actually seen it before, this is what you need to do. All right. So that particular algorithm, um, it's very, very simple. It's called batch normalization. So over the weekend, I also written uh, it, uh, visualizing it. So I'm just going to very, very quickly go through them. So imagine this um, uh, orange color. These were your neurons in the previous layer. Okay. So these are the neurons. The, what the, the neurons in the previous layer, which serves as the input of your current layer, yeah? Okay, great. And uh, can anyone tell me why they are in this corner, down here? Because, you know, they are coming from an activation function. Uh, so, you know, we are picking the sigmoid function, so they're gonna map them into zero and ones. Sorry, in between zero and ones. So they are kind of in this corner. And uh, this is what happens if you have gone through a linear operation, right? That's how deep that's how neural network works. You've got some inputs, and you put them into kind of a linear operator, all right? Then what do you do? You put them onto, another, again, another layer of your, 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 your activation function. So you kind of map them into the way it worked before, all right? So you start off from here. That's the input of your current layer. Uh, and then you apply this linear operator, and then you chuck them in here. That's how a normal neural network functions, yeah? Okay. So now with this batch normalization, you have this extra pink stuff here, okay? Uh, so you start off with the same, um, I guess, orange, which came from your previous layer. It's kind of hidden in here, uh, somewhere. If you look at these two diagrams, the scale are not the same, okay? So it's kind of sitting here. And then the linear layer, which will map them onto this region here. And then obviously, you know, if you're using the traditional, um, uh, our, our neural network without any of the batch normalization, you are going to map them in here. So what we do is that now let's batch normalize them, i.e. we kind of perform some kind of a pseudo data whitening, okay? Pseudo data whitening means that we try to force the data at every dimension to make them Gaussian distributed, okay? So that's what this uh, purple stuff looks like. They're kind of uh, distributed into a Gaussian distribution. And then this is where you start applying the, uh, your, your uh, um, uh, nonlinear activation function again. And you sort of map them into here. Okay? So that's roughly <laughs> what it does. And uh, if you read, um, if you actually read the algorithm, it's actually really, 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 really simple. Okay? You just compute the mean and compute the variance, and then you are able to project your data into a distribution that resembles the Gaussian distribution. Cool. Uh, by the way, these are um, all available to you, so you can just download them and play around with it. In fact, uh, yesterday, it took me about a day to figure out how am I going to have two matplotlib running simultaneously side by side, and also when you press one of them, only one sort of goes to the next one. Uh, because I'm now running them on you know, the GitHub, sorry, I'm I, I, I using this thing, uh, because the normal GitHub doesn't actually display my LaTeX font correctly, and this one does. 
so I can't press it, but if you download them and you load, load up in your own stuff, you just press them and it's gonna go and show the next next um, thing, next, uh, uh, you know, it's like the next slider, that kind of stuff. Okay, play around with it. So, um, obviously, uh, it takes a bit more time for me to go through the rest of this kind of tutorial. Um, um, and and uh, But the rest of the matches shows to people what is actually a data whitening. Uh, do you use data whitening at work? No? Okay. Maybe have a go at it, because um, data whitening will change any of the distributions of your, you know, of your high dimensional data into, well, of, of your multi-dimensional data into, into, um, into in, you know, still, still the same dimensionality, but to every dimension they will be mapped into a standard Gaussian. Okay, and that shows you a bit of um, theories behind why and how it works. I kind of, um, uh, you know, translated into Chinese as well, so this is English and that's Chinese, especially for people in China to read it. Cool. Um, yeah, so you might start off your data that looks like this, okay? And this is not distributed according to a standard Gaussian. And then you apply some kind of transformation to it, you make them into uh, every dimension, they will have a zero mean and standard deviation equal to one, okay? And uh, why is it good doing that? Uh, one of the reasons you want to do data whitening is that you can actually train your parameter a lot faster. And the reason is that if you have a whitened data and your parameters, okay, your parameters or your loss function in terms of parameters are gonna be a symmetric quadratic, okay? So what happens if your loss function is a symmetric quadratic? What does that mean is that if you take a slice of your loss function, it looks like a circle rather than an, an ellipse. Why is it better? Does anyone know? Because if you have a, uh, here's a bit of proof of why do you actually get that. So I'm gonna skip that. Uh, for those of you who are interested, uh, please come to talk to me uh, offline as well. So if you have a quadratic function, looks like that, spherical, uh, spherical contour, you can actually train your parameters a lot faster because using your gradient descent, it's going to shoot like an arrow right towards the center. Okay, that's the minimum value is. And if you end up getting your loss function that looks like an ellipse, okay, looks like an ellipse, that's going to train a lot slower because um, it's going to go like this. Okay, and we all know that the direction of the steepest gradient is actually perpendicular to the contour of your function that you try to optimize, yeah? Okay, that's, that's, a, that's a fact. So you can see that uh, if you wanted to start from here, the direction of steepest contour is actually here because that's per perpendicular to this contour, right? Then you just go from here because it's perpendicular and so on and so forth. So you actually go like this. That's why if you have a perfect spherical contour, it just trains very, very fast, and uh, batch normalization is going to help you to do that. Obviously, batch normalization does a few other stuff, such as that it's it's also prevents um, it's all it's a, you can use that as a regulator, just like how you actually use them uh, for your dropouts. Yeah, and and uh, you know you can uh, for more information, uh, you should read about Andrew Ng's uh, Coursera on. On deep learning, I highly recommend everyone to actually study in that. It's a very light. It's actually very very light. Um, again, um, so you might wonder why is the steepest gradient perpendicular to the contour line? Here's a bit of proof uh, for those who are interested to have a read about that. I even show in a, a little example about why this thing is. Okay, so if you have an ellipse, uh, this is the gradient, and this is the tangent of the the, the contour, and they are always perpendicular. Okay. Okay, the last uh, thing is to I wanted to, to actually say is about recurrent neural nets. So if you have a recurrent neural net, you don't, you know, you, you've got a, there's a, a corresponding sort of a, a batch normalization, which is called layer normalization. So in layer normalization, instead, instead of actually perform the normalized samples from a mini batch, a recurrent neural net doesn't actually need to use a mini batch. You can just have a one training, one, one training samples only but it tries to normalize with all your neurons of that particular layer, okay? So that's, that's the difference, so just be very, very mindful of that. 
Um, we actually did some experiment, as did we. I've asked uh, my student to do some experiment uh, for me. Um, so let me show you. Um, by the way, we're going to upload those things in the, uh, in the GitHub as well. So I'm going to create a little GitHub folder uh, called Deep Learning Meetup uh, 2018 folder. So I'm going to put everything that we have uh, presented uh, into this folder so everyone can sort of download them and have fun with it. Um, the, um, yeah, cool. So you can see that this is using PyTorch. Um, do, do people still, do people use PyTorch more than TensorFlow? Who actually uses PyTorch here? No? TensorFlow. MXNet. <laughs> I will be, I will be. After this meetup, I will be. <laughs> um, right, so MATLAB. And I will be too after this. You know. uh, cool. So yeah, and this is how you do it with uh, PyTorch. Uh, you can see that all you need to do is just shuffle the the uh, the batch norm uh, layer in between this conf and, and the uh, activation uh, layer. Okay, that's all you need to do, and it uh, it does magic. So um, we have done some experiment uh, with batch normalization. Um, this is how quick it is. Uh, we just trained the LXNet with only two animals. Okay, and uh, you can see with no batch normalization, it's much, much slower than if you're using one. Um, and this is in terms of time as well, so, um, you know, it's more or less the same. Now, the interesting thing is that uh, we actually discovered that um, for layer normalization, uh, in terms of iterations, um, LCM, uh, this LCM with layer normalization, it performs much faster. In terms of iterations only, in terms of iteration. But however, the amount of time, the amount of processing time is spending on each iteration is actually pretty long if you're using layer normalization. So it turns out to be something like that. Um, we are still investigating uh, what's happening. It's actually, in terms of time, the LSTM without the normalization, it's actually performed much, much faster. Um, so it's an interesting observation. Uh, it's like a lot of the research that we are actually doing at UTS. Um, it's sometimes we, in theory, the stuff converge a lot faster, but we're going to put a lot of overhead in order to make it to converge faster. So in terms of overall performance, it's actually much, uh, much, much worse. So if anyone has any luck of um, demonstrating that the layer normalization under some Cases it actually works a lot better um, in terms of the overall performance. Please let us know and maybe please share that with the rest of the meetup group as well. Cool, that sounds uh, good. Um, all right, so uh, while you're at it, let me um, show you some of the other stuff that I've been working on. I created this library called MATLAB to Python, um, so it's actually helping people to um, converting from MATLAB to Python. And by the way, now David's here, I'm going to say it actually does the reverse as well. I'm going to, it's also help people converting from Python to MATLAB. And uh, this is how it works. So, MATLAB loves Python, by the way. So, yeah, it actually does the, the conversion both ways. So, what I did is that I, I just, this is what I did, by the way, during Christmas. I start rewriting a lot of these uh, functions. So this, this is um, it's like block read CSV and um, block numpy multiply and block matrix find and so on and so forth. And you can actually find them. Uh, there's quite a lot of things in in there. You can actually find them equivalently in in uh, 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 MATLAB. So you just uh, you just comment out all these functions and you call that function. It will does pretty much exactly the same thing as Python. So for, who, for those of you who actually want to master both languages, uh, by the way, uh, I, I, do, I think I would highly encourage everyone to master both languages because both of them have it, their, their merits. So um, especially you do have an access to a MATLAB like most academics do. Uh, it's actually even more advantageous, uh, of, advantageous of doing that. So uh, it, it kind of helps you too. So I will be committing some time to, to keep on writing this particular tutorial. So please download them and have fun. Um, cool. And actually, that's all I wanted to say about batch normalization. And I'm um, allowing for questions. Please. Um, so back to the batch normalization. Sure. Uh, 
Just a couple of questions. So with batch yeah. normalization, in your example, you had it um, directly after the input layer. Yeah. And yeah. Would, you, would you always put it directly after the input layer? And also, uh, what layers afterwards would you? Sure. Uh, you don't actually put it directly after the input layer. It's put directly after the linear layer. So let me let me show it to you. Um, so the batch normal. So this is a standard uh, neural network. You have the linear layer. Then you have the nonlinear activation layer, and you would insert the uh, batch normalization be between these. Okay. Actually, uh, that's what about 90% of people do. There are some researchers suggest that you should do normalization, but uh, batch normalization after this activation layer. Uh, I haven't actually seen a lot of people do that, but there are online. There's a lot of blogs. People compare performances. It's in some very sort of uh, peculiar circumstances that actually works out to be better. Uh, yeah, it's, you, you are more than welcome to have a go at both. Okay, cool.